what I'm trying to say here is like I am like a horrible gossip, I think. <laughs> I'm just really into like, just like weird things that people do, um, and tend to do. My name is Natalie Ravello. I am a senior, um, yeah, and I'm very into art and things. <laughs> I don't have anything that I'm like currently working on right now, or the one I am working on is at home. So I'm just, for the sake of sort of this, I'm just gonna try to do something. Uh, I haven't done like a like a singular like portrait piece in a long time, so I might do something like that. I don't know. We'll see what. It is. Cool. Um. Well, originally I didn't think I wanted to go to art school. It was kind of just like, oh, this will be like a cool opportunity. And the thing about it is like, is very like self-paced. Well, not necessarily self-paced, but like self-motivated, I guess. You basically just have like deadlines, and that's it and then you just work around that. Um, so that is, that was kind of the initial draw because it's just like, oh, I have the entire art room at my disposal to just kind of do whatever, um, which is nice. Um, and I ended up, I ended up, I did apply to an art school and I did get in on my portfolio. Uh, I can't go, but like, yeah, that was um, kind of, it, it ended up being, better suited for that than I thought it was going to be. And it's cool to have like a collection of your work, that kind of thing. Um, which is what a portfolio is, so yeah. Do your portfolio pieces like share anything in common or are they all just sort of like different? Um, that's, that's kind of an interesting question. Um, I think they maybe share a theme and maybe like a general like vibe. Yeah, I think a vibe is a better word. Uh, because I try, I try not to paint the same thing every time, but um, usually there's some aspect of like, <laughs> I don't know, like some aspect of like anguish or something. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Just kind of, uh, I don't know, like they're usually pretty, um, there's just usually a lot going on, basically. Um, and usually have some sort of narrative quality to it. And they're usually paintings. I've done a little bit more um, other stuff recently, but like first semester, I think I did entirely paintings. So. so that's for starting a new piece. Like, do you like plan it or do you just kind of start going and see what happens? Um, I have, I have an interesting process, I would say. Um, like I said, a lot of my pieces are really like narrative driven. What I'm trying to say here is like, I am like a horrible gossip, I think. <laughs> I'm just really into like, just like weird things that people do um, and tend to do. Um, so usually like I will be like reading a book. Um, I really like like autobiographies. Well not autobiographies, like biographies by like the person, right? Yeah. Writing up. Um, and just the, the crazy kind of stories that people come up with or the stories that people tell that like they don't think are that crazy, but like they are, like they don't really make sense. Um, just those kinds of like scenes, I guess. Yeah. That are very emotionally impact, like impactful, I guess. But in like a like really like, hmm, maybe you shouldn't have done that kind of thing, or like that is such a crazy situation. I don't know. So usually it starts there, and it's. It's kind of like acting, almost, where it's like, like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like, I, if there's a person in this situation, like, usually a woman that I kind of, if not identify with, I sort of like, make myself identify with them, um, kind of, you know, really like put myself like in their place and try to sort of like, feel those emotions in that situation that they're feeling and then when the when the piece happens and I plan out the piece it's kind of just the abstraction of that emotion sort of trying and I'm trying to put it into like figures that's which is like kind of a lot but that's kind of usually how they work they're just a really like wild story that I guess I'm trying to tell which goes back to sort of what I was saying about like the narrative 
quality of, I guess, the Like, in anything you've made this year, like, is there any, like, you know, I, I don't know, like an article or a story that's, like, inspired something you've made? Um, there is, oh man, this is, like, stupid on brand, but, like, Stupid on brand. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but like I, and the favorite thing that I like to that I do is like sort of go down these sort of like rabbit holes, like on like Wikipedia and mm -hmm. stuff, where like you find one thing and then you just click the like the hyperlink to the next thing and you just keep going. And there was something that I found, I think, by way of that, or maybe I, I maybe I did read about it in the book. Um, but it's this like. Um, it's called um, the Cannibalist Manifesto. Um, <laughs> and it's this thing that was written in by um, a guy named Oswald de Andrade in Brazil in like the 30s. This is, yeah, all right. This is very <laughs> on brand. It really is, but yeah, but, continue. Um, it's an interesting sort of intellectual thing that he put out um, because Brazil, like obviously it's like originally you know, it's a colonized country, so really, yeah. like, the native people there. The connotation of that, I guess, whether it's real or fake, is that they're like cannibals and whatever. So this idea in the 30s was like, like you're taking, like it was like cultural cannibalism, so you take like things of your own identity and then like the identity of like your colonizer and all of these things, and you recontextualize it to like to make it fit your narrative, um, which is really interesting. and. That was, I, I was introduced to that by way of this autobiography um, <laughs> by this other guy. It's, 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 like, again, it's just that, like, following the trail, I guess. Uh huh. Because um, he has a really, like, weird relationship with, like, his ex wife. And, like, there was just a piece that happened where I just sort of put all of those together. Yeah. <laughs> just kind of, they're all kind of just conglomerations of like, a clip, like, I don't know, what I have in my brain sort of rattling around all the time. I don't know. Uh, there's this piece that I have here, and it's kind of fallen apart now, but it was um, based off of this really interesting, like, kind of prayer poem that I read. Uh, and basically this piece was the first like non-painted piece that I had done this year. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, well, I took a bunch of cardboard on boxes and stuff and I, I made like a little like kind of like slurry of like white paint and like Mod Podge and like water and I, I stuck all of these and like there's a ton of like pins in it that I stuck all of these cardboard pieces together, painted it like white. And so then for each sort of p thing put forth in this poem or prayer, I sort of made this object that I put on there mm -hmm. um, as a sort of like, you know how people like have those like crazy like religious signs? It sort of feels yeah. like that, but in like a really abstract kind of weird way. And anyway, I liked it so much because it is not painted and it's just sort of conglomerate. Well, there are parts that are painted, there are parts that are sculptural. It's just yeah. kind of like a conglomerate. I thought, I don't know, I thought it was really cool. And that's probably why it's my favorite piece, so. Yeah, it's a bit of a feat, I guess. Make me excited about art. A top three, okay. Uh, I don't want to say like basic things, but like, sometimes that's just how it is, I don't know. I Just to start, um, I think, Frida Kahlo, and I'm going to talk about, I am going to talk about that more, because okay. Frida Kahlo has become this, like, horrible, like, I don't know how much of this you can put in the actual interview, but I want you to at least put some of this sentiment in there. Okay, I will. Horrible, like, girl boss, like, capitalist, like, marketable feminism figure. Um, you know, there's so much, like, like, merch with like her face on it and, yes like, i don't know she has just like become this avatar for like a kind of feminism and empowerment that doesn't really mean anything because people like her work is so so much different than the way that people present it right like there were a lot of like like people talk about like oh like her self portraits and stuff and there's she did do primarily self portraits and like the ones that they are like oh wow this is amazing they are amazing but that is like tip of the iceberg of her like stuff not only of her work but also like 
what her work like represents um and the di the emotion that she put like into it like it is such a it has been so simplified um and also sort of put into uh, an ideological category when it, it is completely transcendent of all of those and is in rejection of all of those. So, um, I, you know, that, that sort of quantifying of identity, it, it, reject, it rejects all of that, but that is sort of what it has become, and I want justice for Frida Kahlo. You want justice for Frida Kahlo? <laughs> no, I want justice for Frida Kahlo. Because her stuff is amazing, and I, I, I wish I had the kind of, like, clarity that she has about herself and about her art uh, but I think that's something that she possessed like in its entirety and I don't think that's something I could ever like really achieve but I really like this artist named um, Cindy Sherman uh, she is a photographer um, from like the 70s and she is actually I guess similar to Frida Kahlo in that um, all of her well the majority of her photos are like self-portraits um, but hers are photo like photography self-portraits um, where she puts herself in like different makeup and like usually it's actually like really these different like subtle changes um, and like the staging of the photo like or to how that she like looks um, but she's inhabiting these different like characters and she does she has a bunch of different like series that she's done over the years and that's also like the only thing she does which is cool like she's very like specialized um but i think it's it's part of like a frida kahlo thing but i think it's also part of a like what i said about like acting because her first like really big thing that made her so famous was um it was called untitled film stills i think is what it was called hmm. so there she was embodying these like these notions of like I guess these notions of like women or just kind of people in general like within like film and that sounds really like I don't know really kind of arbitrary but they're, they're, it's very good <laughs> and um, it goes back to sort of what I was saying about acting and inhabiting different characters and thinking about different ways of like how, how life is um, and I think she, um, she's very good uh, Cindy Sherman very cool lady um, I, it's hard. I don't really think about it like, oh, I'm a big fan of this artist or this style of art. I think I just kind of think about it like, like what kind of kind of art I like. I don't know. Like, yeah. if I see something and I like it, I like it. I also really love cave paintings for the similar sort of idea of simplicity, um, and also that idea that like, like simplicity and clarity, and since we don't really know like what they're all about you know like we don't know why mm -hmm. they made them that is also interesting to me and that that like they could be saying literally anything and we have no idea and i think that's a really cool concept. so i really like cave paintings yeah yeah pastel piece and this charcoal piece um i i really like how they turned out um especially this one um, i just think her face is very nice um this one this one is about Actually. Oh seriously? Yeah. Um, about like this short story. Like that's supposed to be her. Cause I love Clarice Lispector. Like I love her face. Cause she's like, she wrote. She's like I don't know. She her whole vibe was a very like, like diva like housewife. And mm -hmm. like especially when she got older, she put on like cakes of makeup. Um, but she like writes like the most transcendent crazy stuff I've like ever. Like, um. It's awesome. Uh, and then there's that pastel piece, which pastel was such an interesting piece for me. I don't know. It wasn't very... It was fun. Um, yeah, I like doing it. Um, I don't really... I mean, there are some pieces that I I wish kind of turned out better, but I love her t-shirt. Um, I love her t-shirt. And I love all the, like... What are these about? Like, those are, like... Like, this part? Yeah. Like, that's supposed to be, like, the wallpaper, kind of. And I, like, etched it in before I, like, sealed it. This is a piece that I will also, this is I think my second one this year, that I was also pretty proud of. Um, oh yeah, that's very cool. It is primarily paint, but this part is like clay, um, and this is like, like clay mixed with water, like really watery. 
<laughs> but yeah, uh, it's about, I, what is it called? I don't remember. But um, it's based off of this religious painting by this, I don't know, this like random guy. Um, where I think it's like Jesus like healing, like I think he was blind or something. Um, but it's supposed to be, oh, it's called um, The Ghost of Leonard Cohen. And then it's after, so yeah, I don't know. That is, Leonard Cohen is also somebody who I just think about a lot. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and make a lot of like art about, usually when I'm like trying to like figure out a new medium, he just kind of appears in that new medium when I'm trying to work on it. He's kind of my muse, I guess. You could Leonard say. Cohen is your muse. Leonard Cohen is my muse. Um, this is a little lur canvas on a bigger canvas. Ooh, it's like a painting within a painting. Painting within a painting. Um, this part is sort of supposed to be depicting this like this like Japanese like myth or whatever from like a bajillion years ago about like the lady who turned into like like the goddess who turned into the sun and like. She was like hiding in a cave because all the gods were like mad at her or something and then she left the cave and she was like, there was so much emotion. I don't really remember what the emotion was. There was so much emotion that she like, and like became the sun. <laughs> um, so that's what that's about. And this smaller canvas is sort of supposed to be like, I don't know, it's supposed to, I guess, make you think about like, what is the impact of the story on this woman, right? On this character. Yeah. Um, or, and I guess what is the impact of that story like on, you could continue to say like for, for women in general, right? Like how does that relate to the idea of being a woman? Um, and those kinds of things. So, yes. Sweet little alligator girl. Sweet Who's little it? alligator girl. She's about three and a half feet tall. Um, no. She is so cool. She is so cool. I just like her. I like her so much. Um, and then yeah, so then I have like her father and mother as like these other pieces. Oh, so they're like a family. Yeah. Okay. Um, their dad is like six foot. And then I think the mother is kind of in a weird pose, but she ended up being like five and a half foot, I think. Pretty much life size. These were such like, <laughs> these were such a time. I don't know. These were so difficult. Cause I tried to like put them on like, I had to like use this like spray glue to like try to put them on these like easels, but it was like a wind advisory and <laughs> there was so, there were tears shed. There was so much going on, but um, they're fine. Um, and I kind of like they're a little maybe screwy now, but I like how they ended up. And it's kind of a feat. But it's definitely a feat to make life size paintings. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway. That's pretty much that. That's all I have with me.